Hey, hey, hey. Carl Bryan coming at you. Hope everybody's doing good. Some of you are probably listening to me. <laughs> you just finished listening. You're going to be very sick of me here soon. Well, that's all right. I'm here with my buddy Patrick. Patrick, are you there, brother? Hey, Carl. How's it going? How's your day? Fabulous, man. Fabulous. It's a go, go, go. I started at 3 a.m. today. You know, one of those days when you wake up and you just, there's just no point lying down. <laughs> you know, it's like game over. You are awake. So I've had one of those days, buddy. But she's a go, 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 man. She's a go, go, go. How about you? It's a good day. I've got some time this morning to dream on the software and make it better and find some. Oh, boom. This is what everybody, folks, everybody just take one fist and throw it up in the air. That's <laughs> what we want. We want our boy Patrick dreaming about this stuff. Okay, look, let's. Uh, so, guys, uh, the 101 here, uh, this is a Q&A call, profit acceleration style. Um, what we need to do is get some questions, some Q&A going. So uh, we do the A, you guys do the Q. So if you can do us a favor, either raise your hand or uh, just chuck a question in there and we will, we will open you up. But I'll tell you what, before we do that, why don't we open up a line? You know who I'm going to open up? I'm going to open up Daniel Hassler. Daniel, I am coming for you, buddy. Got to make sure you can hear us. Here you go, Daniel. Hey, man. How you doing? Fabulous. What's happening? What's happening? Uh, excited to learn. This is great stuff. Yeah, that's what we want to hear. I've got one of a really good buddy in Australia. I've seen your name a few times there. His name is Daryl Hassler. I see it. Oh. Is that Daryl? I call him D.H. Is Daryl there? Anyways, how are you doing, Daniel? Happen to have a question for us, buddy. First of all, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. You're in, by the way. Can you see Pat's screen? Um, yeah, I can. I can hear you just fine. How do I sound? Oh, there we go. Now you're you're much better now. Tell us by any chance we opened you up just blind here, but you got a question for us here, bud? You know, I'm. Uh, this is my first uh, profit acceleration software. Um, meeting or webinar, so um, I, I don't actually have a question. Right? I mean, I guess actually, one question I'm curious to know because of the pandemic. Um, I would assume this is something that you could show uh, via screen share with a client on Zoom, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a lot of you know. Like, we'll probably like we might even answer this question, but we've done it many a times. We'll go through it again because this is important because there's some other new folks here. The dynamic looks a little bit like this, where <clears throat> you can see Pat's, that's Pat's screen up, right? Yep. So Pat, did you hit, uh, did you go to one of the, like the daycare, or the impact example, <clears throat> please? There we go. So you're going to be here, right? And you're going to, you're going to learn all about this, but you're going to hit. So uh, Pat, could you hit market dominating position for us? So Daniel, when you're ripping through uh, market dominating position, see, I would keep them on the last screen and then all you'll do is pause like you just pause your screen right so uh -huh. you would have stayed here um, and then you go through market dominating position so that they can't see that you're just reading the questions right bingo bingo bongo um and then okay so then there's a breakthrough so you'll see pat's got like two percent two percent which represent uh twenty thousand each right so then he would he'd them submit that or go to results whichever like yeah if, so you could, if you wanted to show them this, okay, so now you unfreeze your screen and you're like, oh, wow, okay, awesome. Look, we managed to find 40 grand so far. And then you keep going, right? Now, now you'd go, like you'd either freeze it here. I, I'd recommend actually, yeah, thanks. Hit that, please. Yeah, I, I would freeze it here actually. Um, okay. And then basically you go to the, then you're going to go down to leads or joint ventures or digital marketing or whatever. And same thing, you just, it's a series of freezing and unfreezing your screen. And then we're kind of highlighting, see the top profit, you see the profit impact there, 294,500, which is a 147% increase. Just kind of highlighting that as we're moving along. Right? Very cool. You get to 100 grand, you surpassed, you know, the goal, big, you know, you probably, you promised 10, 25, 50, and then you come through with 100, you're like, holy smokes, you know, we're at $100,000 already, only got through, you know, three to five sections. Look, what do you think? Do you want some Love help? It. Yeah, so that 
that's the answer. And again, a lot of the folks have heard that one before, but it's, it's an important and it's a good dynamic. Uh, Pat, can I ask you would, anything that you would have added? Anything I left out, bud? No, it's exactly what I do. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. For this a few times. All right, Daniel. Stuff. Awesome. Good having you, man. I'm going to call you DH, Daniel. Just a word of warning. Okay. Um, okay. Daniel McCrane has got a question. So we're coming for you, buddy. And again, guys, if you either raise your hands or chuck a question in the box there, Pat, we're going to go to Daniel McCrane sure. next. And Daniel, you are self muted, my friend. Yeah, there you go. Daniel, you are live. Awesome. All right. I've got a question that's probably been asked and answered before, but I just can't remember the answer. Um, so, okay. Pat, when we're looking at this screen right here, uh, up in the top corner where it's showing all the expected increases and everything else, I did a, a PAS with a guy. He had 180000 in uh, annual revenue and 10% net profit. So current profit was showing $18,000. Right. When we went to the expected increase in revenue, we had, I'm going to round up, I'm going to say it was $250,000 in expected increase, but his new annual profit was not 10% of the expected right. increase. <clears throat> yep. And I couldn't make it be some additional amount plus the original 18,000 in profit. So I, can you yeah. <laughs> help me help me explain that to someone else? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So whenever you find an impact in a business, uh, you have to realize that uh, the business owner, the business has already paid their rent, their insurance, their salaries, all those things that impact your net profit margin. If you find additional revenue for them, they're going to make an additional you don't measure the additional increase against net profit margin because they've already paid for those things. But you do have to fulfill on the product or service. You might have to pay commissions or something. <clears throat> so you measure that impact against your gross profit margins. And so if you found um, like an additional revenue of whatever it was, say 200, what do you say it was? A couple hundred thousand? Uh, yeah, let's say 250. 250, okay. And if your gross profit margin is um, 50%, then your additional profit is an additional $125,000. So you're measuring it against your gross profit margin, not your net. Gotcha. Okay. That's where I was uh, missing the computation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and yep. Pat, can I just have a go? Like, I just imagine if you want now, if you can use a really simple example, just go like if you raise their prices. Again, there's no expenses attributed to it, right? It's just literally raising their prices. It's it's all money for jam. Make sense, Daniel? It does. Those fixed costs can be subtracted out of the additional revenue. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, buddy. Cool bananas. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Cool, man. Yeah. There you go. Carl, let me address another question I had this morning on an email. Yeah. And sure. This is some. A lot of coaches get hung up on this. Um, if we take uh, these examples here, and I've got uh, 40,000, 26,000, 40,000, 555. If I add all these up, these do not equal your expected increase in revenue. And the reason is, uh, this, if you, yeah, these will be a lot less than your expected increase. But the reason is that um, we are not adding things, we are compounding things. So a yeah. good way to look at this is if I take my current revenue and I want to add 4%, I'm going to say current revenue times 1.04 and I'm going to times it by 1.03 and 1.05. It's not exactly, maybe it's approximate, but um, you're going to very quickly get a number which is, um, uh, you'll get to this number here, but it's, it's a much higher number than just adding things. Uh, the example I was asked about this morning, they had, I think, six areas of impact. There was uh, three ten percent, no, three fifteen percent, a ten percent, a twenty percent, and a fifty percent. And those numbers just blew up. And it's just amazing how big the number can get if you do that. So um, that's why you know we always recommend 
I mean, yeah, you can put 50% in, you might get 50, you might get 500% increase. These things are possible. And of course we teach how to do that. Like any one of these areas we're showing on the screen here or any one of the 40 different areas in the, the breakthrough 40, any one of those areas you might be able to find 100% impact. But what we're asking people to do and we're trying to continually remind people is just knock it down as low as you can go. So if they say, hey, 50%, it's like, yeah, you might get that, but let's be super conservative. Let's be ultra conservative because we don't want to overinflate our numbers. We want to get something we can easily achieve. So if we could easily achieve something, what would be a really conservative number for you? And they go, well, easily five or 10%. You go, well, let's take five. Always knock them down, you know, as possible, as low as you can. Because you see, if you found uh, 15 areas here, is that 15 or 16? That's 12, thank you. <laughs> We're in the profit jumpstart. Um, so I, even I get confused here. So if you find three or four or five percent over 12 areas, you're still getting 147% impact on profits. If you only get 3% over 12 areas, I think you're at 121. So <clears throat> Yeah, you don't need to go big to hit home runs here. Just imagine what it takes. If you say, we got 5% here in digital marketing. Now, um, like talk to a business owner. You say, you know, small business owner, how many leads are you getting a year from the internet? They go, well, I don't know. And if you go, well, if you did know, what would it be? And they go, well, probably, you know, 1,000 leads. And uh, you notice that sneaky question. I use that on my kids all the time. Hey, if you did know, where were you last night? <laughs> Like, no, I was like, oh. There we go. <laughs> Little Jedi mind tricks with Patrick Bell. I love it. I love it. If you did know, what would it be? And they go, oh, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I'd probably get a thousand leads. <laughs> yeah. So, well, 5% impact is 50 leads a year. It's nothing. It's one lead a week. Like you can send your daughter onto social media for 10 minutes and get that extra lead, right? It's just not a hard thing to do. So 5% gains are so easy to do in so many areas and you don't need to shoot for the stars on this, swing for the fences or whatever. So that's what I have to say. Let's move on. Yeah. Love it. Well done. What do you think? Does that help? Oh, where's he going? Do we have... Oh, where is he here? Let's assume it did help. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We're all good. Okay. Uh... Who else do we got here? Tarek, I'm coming for you. Sorry, and again, I need some questions, guys. I've got a question. Either raise your hand or plunk it in. Uh, Tarek, you're um, you're muted there, my friend. You got to unmute yourself at your end. Um, possibly shy, possibly not working. That's okay. Let's go over to here. Okay, so. Tarek is actually, that's a really good point. Um, so what um, they're saying is that what you could do is have two windows open. Okay, so what she's talking about is that, you know how I was saying earlier that you're, you're gonna freeze your screen, like where Pat has the summary up on this, this business. Um, you freeze your screen here and then go to the questions. So you could have two window. Oh, Tarek says not, um, can't unmute, not shy, love it, no worries. Uh, but anyway, so, um, yeah, just have two windows going and you, you know, you have two screens, which is a good idea. Um, on one screen, you're going through the questions. Pat, let me ask you, that would update, correct? If you had two different, um, if you were logged into your account, actually, that might not work. If you were logged into your, you understand what I'm asking? You're I'm logged asking. into your account. You've got two different screens open um, on the same business. One screen, you're doing the adjustments and the other screen, they're witnessing the summary go up, would that work? I'm just trying it as we're speaking here. So let's see, um, market dominating position is four. I'm gonna say, oh, we're not gonna get four, we're gonna get uh, 204. Let's see what happens. Uh, so I did it on the other screen. It didn't update automatically, but if I went up and just um, refresh my page, and there we go. Boom. Yeah. Okay. So you just need to refresh a series of times. So that, that might be easier. So, it, you know, so if you have a, uh, like if you use uh, join.me as an example, 
they've got a free version and then they've got a paid version. On the free version, you can't uh, pause your screen and then on the paid version, you can. Um, so as an example, if you, you wanted to do that, you could do it that way. So you just refresh um, periodically and the numbers would be going up. So, so there you go, good job. That helps, he says. Um, cool. And Daniel, um, who else do we got here? Jeff has got a question. Jeff, coming for you, buddy. Yeah, that's actually yeah. that was a great question, um, Carl. That was exactly. a great question because uh, I've never done that before, so I learned something new here. Yeah. Derek, high five. Hey, Carl. Jeff, how are you? Fabulous, man. You're live, buddy. Great. Hey, just a real quick question here since I'm new to the whole program. Is there a way to put our name or company brand logo on customizing? Yeah, on the software? Yeah, yeah, so we white label like we do the rest. The answer is no. Okay. Um, and then reason being, like, your website is kind of, we'll call it consumer facing, right? So, like, let's say Pat is a chiropractor and he's your client. You know, he's going to go to jeffsbusinessacademy.com and, it, you know, the videos are going to come out and he's going to watch the videos and then you've got your picture there, right? So it's, you know, white labeled, we call it, right? right? You know that? Um, with the software, you're not really sending it to the business owner. Um, so there's no real need to have it white labeled, right? Like you'd be going through this entire process with them. So, uh, so the answer is no. And that's kind of the loose, you know, not so much the reasoning why, but uh, there we go. So, so that's the answer. Is Bananas? there some report that we can create in a PDF that could be branded? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Pat, could you hit reports for us, bud? Yep. Yeah, big time, big time. So it did, well, kind of, it, it does that for you. Um, so yeah, you see, this is, notice this is the summary. Yeah, just right there. Oh, sorry, just go up. You see the, you know, for XYZ daycare and then prepared by right there, Pat Picks. Yep. You see that? And then, so anyway, so, and then, um, and, and it doesn't populate perfectly. So I just imagine, you know, spend, Pat, what do you think? Like 30 minutes when they first get going and then a little bit less afterwards to, to customize it? I would say um, to get a really nice report right now, probably an hour when you first do it, and then probably you know half an hour or so every time after that. Uh, I'm gonna go to, I think it's this one. It's the training page at noresults-nofee.com forward slash software. And there's a training on here on how to edit the software report. So I go through in detail how I do it. Um, this is this was not the ideal scenario. It's just that the problem is we've been trying to mix images and text and everything is kind of hyper responsive to um, your specific situation. So for example, you know, everything's added here. The problem is our developer just, I mean, he spent weeks and weeks on this and just couldn't get it to look right. So we pulled them off this project, we put them on other things that are at higher impact. Sure. Our goal in this was, you know, originally, um, if you want to write a report like this, it might take you a week to come out with something like this if you have no idea, like you're starting from scratch. You know, it could be a week or two. But we thought, how can we, uh, how can we push a button and get an instant report? And we, we didn't quite get there, but we did get, uh, you know, down to an hour from a week or two. Now, if I go to um, the roadmap, and oh. this one should be ready to go, um, I think, instantly. And then on the uh, Hey, can I just, sorry, Pat, may I? Um, if you just go back there for one sec. I just want yeah. Jeff to see the 519. I just want to show him the way it, the way it populates, right, on the roadmap. Yeah, there you go. You see the way it populates 519, which is taken right there. Boom. Gotcha. Yeah, so you can go in and brand these um, with, put your own brand on your logos and stuff like that. That's, I mean, it's your report there. So when I go into the digital jumpstart, and I think this was, you know, uh, this report, it, it doesn't look perfect coming out here, but um, when you're showing it to people on a screen, it's very, responsive here it's kind of cool and when you download it it comes out quite nice and then also we've got the roadmap here which is this digital acceleration roadmap these are giving you your kind of your bullet points 
about uh, how you're going to grow the company and the time frames are inserted automatically from what you said it would take in the uh, priorities tab. So this is uh, pretty much ready to go as well. It might take, I mean, you might do something for five minutes or something, but you can go and bold things and change the fonts and different things, whatever you like to do. That's cool. From a best practice perspective, is it better to provide them the questionnaires beforehand and then we get the data back and then input it so we just take them through the output? Or do you typically do it on a uh, one call and what's no, you that most effective? Um, I would uh, definitely not send it ahead of time um, for me. The reason yeah. is people, in a conversation, um, people are more honest with you as you probe than they're sitting by themselves. They'll go, oh yeah, well, that's 50%, that's 20%. Yeah, I don't know about that. You know, I would, um, it's better to have to control the conversation as you go and point them where you want them to go rather than letting them do them their own thing. Carl, what do you think about that? Yeah, totally. Um, you, you pretty much nailed it. You don't want to send them ahead of time. Um, other dynamics at play there, but the most important one is kind of what Pat said. Like you just don't get this. Like when I'm just asking you on the spot, it's like, it's Pat, what you did earlier, right? Like if you, you know, if you did know, what would you say? You know, like that kind of stuff, right? Uh, um, you kind of put them on the spot. So there's a, there's a dynamic and an ad lib that's um, pretty powerful. So, so no, don't send them the, um, that's not to say that you don't send them anything, right? Like I'll send out, um, let's say somebody wants to talk um, and it's as much as anything, it's to do kind of preeminence. Like it kind of puts me in a, a white coat as a doctor. Um, and then also, if you're not willing to respond to an email to me, are you really going to spend, you know, let's just say two grand a month, 24 grand a year for me to, you know, be your mentor? And the answer is no, right? So I would send you an email that would say, well, look, tell me, um, when did you get started with your coaching company, right? In brackets, it's fine if you're, you know, brand new. Um, approximate um, revenues. Um, how much do you charge per client? How many clients do you have? Right? You see, that's not, that's just stuff that I would literally, like pretty straightforward, right? Um, I could send you that just to kind of put on my white coat, if you know what I mean, like as the doctor. But as far as going through and sending through the questions here, absolutely not. Help? Thank yes, thank you. Here's some awesome. other cool. questions. Great. Question. Oh, these are questions you might be able to send because um, I would want to know some of these things up front. And this comes from your success gauge, success questionnaire. Do you have the capacity to handle a sudden influx of new customers? Oh, there we go. Yeah. And if they don't, do you want them as a client? Because you're not going to help them with uh, marketing or growth. You're going to be helping them with uh, higher operations and with optimizing what they have. Um, do you have established policies and procedures for all the important marketing and sales aspects of your business? Um, if they don't, that's the kind of client I want because if, if they don't have them, they need to have them. And, you know, we, we got some work to do there and we got a lot of opportunity to grow through that. Uh, regarding your personal reaction to change, how are you to describe you? Are you coachable? How hungry are you? There's another question in here. Uh, if you go into valuation, it's got some great questions. Um, and there's one here I love. Are your marketing and sales processes documented so that sales are predictable? <clears throat> and the reason I love this question is because almost everyone will say no, but that's what everyone wants. And, and yeah. if, if you're asking the question, they're assuming that you can help them get it as well. And you better be able to help them get that. We'll figure out a way to help them get that. So, um, this shows that you're an expert. It's an expert. <laughs> so these yeah. are the kind of questions you might want to send ahead of time. Um, and you just kind of want to, you, you've got to like prime the pump, get them really excited to meet you. But you also want to weed out those that you really don't want to work with. So if, you're, if your baseline for helping someone is half a million dollars of annual revenue, and they come in at 75,000, you probably want to know that ahead of time. Yep. You might say, what are your annual revenues? Give them ranges or something like that. Um, those are the kind of questions I'd be asking. So you actually got to bring up another question. Do you mind? Am I okay asking another one? No, go, go, Jeff. You're fine. So another vendor, let's put it that way, kind of recommended the 
you have a 15 minute pre-call discovery before you get into the in-depth aspect of like showing something like the acceleration software. So you find your discovery and you ask the questions like you just asked of, you know, what's your revenue? Do you have a sales process? So you kind of get your discovery call done and say, okay, great. Let me take this information and let me you know, develop you a presentation and let's schedule another call for you know next week at boom boom. Is that your style that you find effective or you prefer doing it all at once? I've never you used, wanna, yeah, I've never used a discovery call like that. Um, I mean, if it's 15 minutes, possibly, I don't know. It doesn't set right with me. Um, but I've always I've been stuck in a process which I like for years as well. So, I mean, if if someone's doing something and it works great for them and they're signing up more clients with it, I'd love to hear about it. Carl, what do you think? Um, I give two things I want to say. One, uh, Pat, I just want to high five you because I've guys. Um, actually, Pat, can I give you an idea? Um, I think we should take that question because I agree. Are your marketing and sales processes uh, documented? Um, so that sales are predictable. I think that that should go over on the success questionnaire. And I want everyone just to steal that because I, I never always, I didn't realize that like it, those questions are perfect for what Jeff was asking about. Um, prior to meeting with somebody, what do you send them? That's exactly pretty much what I would send them. And then I would add this question in there. Um, the last question that was there was also, are you hungry? Uh, to some might, um, you know, might uh, wonder what does that make any sense? If you were to ask me, like, what's the difference between Federer, Serena Williams, uh, LeBron James, Tom Brady, you know, Wayne Gretzky, you name it, what what separates them? And I would say one word. And actually, what separates my coaching clients that you know stumbled, everything was my fault, and the ones that crushed it and achieved their goals times ten? And it's just one word: hunger. So that's why the last word, the last. A question a success questionnaire on a scale of one to ten how hungry are you right because you're to ask me you know what's the niche you know in order to crush it with a coaching client what am I looking for and I just tell you give me somebody who's hungry and we're going to be dangerous together so Jeff just wanted to say that to add to what Pat said earlier and then I didn't quite understand it Pat I'm sorry like what what was the question like a 15 minute call prior to the the 100k meeting is that right do you want to ask the question again? Is it Jeff? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, level ask Jeff. That makes sense. I just okay, Jeff, you're you're live again. Could you just in, give me a real short, sharp? Sure. From your question? sales process, can you hear me, Paul? Yep. Yes. Okay. From from your guys' sales process perspective and best practices, do you typically have a one call where you find out all the information, you go through the acceleration software program? Or do you kind of do that needs discovery call up front and then you schedule oh. a call to go through in more in detail? Okay. Uh, okay. High five. Great question. Um, no, absolutely not. Um, okay. So what I would do, and, and again, the, the dynamics at play here, what, okay. In a perfect world, if you can kind of picture this, um, step one is lead. Step two is education. Step three is consultation. So think 100K meeting, the profit acceleration software. Um, and then I've got a follow-up meeting, which I would call half day in the trenches. And then step five is that I'm coaching you, right? I don't expect anybody to grab, like there are the five steps. If you listen to the recording or go to the recording, you'll see them right there. But it's lead, education, uh, consultation, follow-up to the consultation, which I ha call half day in the trenches. And then five is coaching, right? Um, in a perfect world, I take you from lead to education, which would be my seminar. And then third would be the, um, the diagnostic, like when I say diagnostic thing or consultation, think of the software, right? Um, so in a perfect world, they would go to my seminar and then I get together with them and I'll have a higher level of preeminence. I answered this really in detail on the call that I did earlier this morning. If anybody's interested in that uh, recording of, um, it'll be on my YouTube channel and it's, um, you know, that I solve any business coaching problem on the spot. But anyways, real quick, um, you're talking about a dynamic where you're not doing, edu you're not doing the webinar. It's kind of like a cold call type or a referral type situation. So here's what I would do. 
is think 15 minute phone call where I'm always too busy to talk and I'm the one that has to go. That's very important, right? Because people want what they can't have. So what I would do, uh, Jeff, is I'd have a 15 minute call with you. Look, Jeff, just give me a bit of an understanding as to where you're at. Think little red arrow, you are here. And what are the goals for your businesses, you know, business and some of your opportunities, right? You'll start talking a little bit. I'm gathering data, gathering data. My spidey senses are big time looking for, you know, opportunities, problems that you're facing, et cetera, listening to your language and the patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will go to, I will always, 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 always put this in the conversation and you guys should too. I can find anybody a hundred grand in 45 minutes without them spend without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. Okay. That's going to establish my preeminence a little bit. So I would go from that 15 minute call. I tell you how busy I am and I apologize that I don't have more time to spend, but look, Jeff, here's what I can do. Look, I normally charge big bickies, you know, a thousand dollars to get together and do what I find again, a hundred, find a hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising because needs to be because a reason frame or because frame, because you were referred from Pat, because you're a chiropractor, because we're members of the chamber, because we play hockey together, because I know your sister, because it's got to be because, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll sit down with you. Um, and by the way, at the end of it, there's a good chance that you're going to want to work with me, which that opportunity may be available to you. It just depends on what kind of opportunities are available in your business. Um, but I'll tell you what, look, this Tuesday and Thursday, um, or Tuesday and Thursday next week, I've got a little bit of time. If it's Thursday or Friday. If it's Monday, then I'm thinking Thursday. I'm never available tomorrow. I'm never available this afternoon, right? right. Don't do that one. That's Agreed. the wrong message, right? Wow. So anyway, so look, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Jeff, I got a little bit of time. Look, it takes me 45 minutes, but look, you're going to have some questions, and I want to make sure that I'm you know, delivering at the highest level. Um, let's schedule 90 minutes so that I can cover all of your, you know, make sure that you leave with what you need. I'll rip you through my process. Um, we'll see if we're a good fit for one another and we'll get together for 90 minutes on Tuesday or Thursday. Do you have your calendar handy? Boom. And that now I get you, you know, I get you on that call and then we go. And actually, and what's important, um, and in between the 15 minute call and the 90 minute call, right now I would send you to the video that everything is wrong. And I say, look, Jeff, I don't mind. Don't, you know, I'll, I'll do the 90 minutes and I'm going to do it at no charge. But you got to watch my 90 minute video. I'll send you a, a link um, in an email. You got to watch that video because when we get together, I got to make sure that, you know, it's a profitable, like at the end of that call, I want you to be making money seven minutes after the call. Okay. I don't want to spend 90 minutes educating you. So I want you to feel comfortable. I'm not sending you to a sales pitch. What I'm sending you to is debatably a 90 minute video that will provide you about a two year marketing degree. Okay. So you got to promise me for, on behalf of your business, you got to promise me that you'll watch the video and then we'll get together on Tuesday and we're going to change the complexity or we're going to change the direction and the trajectory um, of your business for now and forever after that meeting. I can't wait. So that's what I'd say. Make sense? Makes sense. I love it. Thank you. Yep. And then, and by the way, and Pat and I have, so I'm actually just critiquing this. Um, so eight, I, I can't remember, Pat, did we mention it on the last um, software call? But we're, we're creating a, um, like a video that's going to replace the 90 minute. It's not going to replace everything is wrong video because for the right situation, that video is pure gold. Um, and Pat just redid the entire thing and did a bang up job. Um, so if you go to your domain name on your membership site, right, your ELMS, I mean, you go forward slash wrong, um, you're going to see either the new video is there now or it's going to be very shortly. Um, that video is there for the right dynamic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there it is on your screen, guys. Um, so for the right dynamic, which would be somebody needing some help with marketing, like if I'm speaking to somebody and I'm like, man, your website, your sign, your magazine ad, your billboard, your whatever is a dog's breakfast. This is the video to show them, okay? Because it shows them how everything about their video or their marketing is wrong. Um, we're creating what's probably going to be like a 20-minute video, which is significantly shorter, um, which obviously has its advantages. But please don't assume 
because the video's 90 minutes long that nobody will watch it, okay? Because you want people to pay you 24 grand and then be their mentor. And for them, to, when you say jump, they say how high. If they're not gonna watch a 90 minute video, um, they're probably not gonna hire you. And if they do hire you, they're not gonna do what you said, right? Again, that's something that I, I handled a little more in depth today on that um, solve any uh, business coaching problem on the spot. So again, maybe if you like that topic that I just went over, you might wanna watch that. Uh, but, but anyway, so that video is going to be a little bit, it's going to be a lot shorter. Like again, I'd say 30 minutes on the outside, possibly as short as 15 minutes. Don't know, haven't recorded it yet. Um, but it's going to be really, really powerful. And it goes through more like the five steps as opposed to why their marketing is a big dog's breakfast. So what do you think? And Pat, anything you'd add? And Jeff, what do you think? I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I actually, I'm looking well, forward before I get in my, my sign up and running call since I'm still new here, but uh, I, I just love the concept. So thank you. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Pat, anything you'd add, buddy? All good? Well, I think it'd be useful if we came up with a, a separate document or resource where we could have a list of questions that they could send out to, uh, to people ahead of time and yeah, maybe I agree. Just put it here on this page here. Well, no, on where we put it um, is on their um, so like patrickbelluniversity.com forward slash questions. That's where it goes. <clears throat> oh yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, if they could do have like an autoresponder almost built, so people yeah. go hey, just go to this page, fill this out, I'll get the answers. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, let me. Love yeah. I'll build that tonight when I'm sleeping, don't worry. <laughs> you got nothing better to do, man. Come on, dude. Who needs you'll sleep when you're dead, man? Come on. No, that's exactly right. That's what I mean. It's like <laughs> I do that kind of stuff in my sleep. <laughs> I love it. Okay, you're a legend, man. Um, okay, we're gonna come Linda. Linda, 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 Linda. You are live, Linda. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Sure can, how's it going? Awesome. Uh, so I'm fairly new to this, but I have gone through Profit Acceleration Software one time with a uh, person that I know who just started a business. Um, so I have a number of questions uh, that came yeah. up from that first experience. Um, I, I loved this software. It was just amazing. Um, Love it, that's what I wanna hear. So I have a question around the, um, there's a question early in the software, maybe it's under either financials or valuations, I don't remember which right now, about um, percentage of net and percentage of gross. So for this person who has a brand new business and is taking almost all of the money out for wages and expenses, um, it's having a big impact on profit margin. Um, uh, you know, she wanted to put in like 70%. Oh yeah, okay, so you pulled it up. That's, those are the questions. Um, and she doesn't have a full year's revenue by any means. So, yep. you know, it was really tough. Um, what are your thoughts about like how to come up with a number for net profit and gross profit when yeah. they're pulling everything out yeah that's a great question um so you have your what industry are you in and this is where you look at your industry average uh, net and gross profit margins and if you don't know like if no I see this if the, if the business you're assessing is not on this list now there's only a hundred or so on the list so click on the first one which is other You'll have to do some research on the internet, but go and find out like what are the average net profit margin and gross profit margins in their business. So that's where I'd come up with that. You don't, you don't, uh, yeah. These numbers here aren't super necessary for a lot of the software. It's really good for the, the increased prices or the cut costs. So let's just say that they came up with uh, 20. I mean, you could enter it there, 20 and 50. But then just go back and enter it here as well. It's like, well, the industry average is 20. So if we just get you at the average, um, you'll be at 20% net, 50% gross. 
But I agree, it's really hard to come up with this for a startup. Uh, we've had a few questions around this, and you know, this might be a place where we refine the software in the future. Um, how do you deal with startups? How do you deal with negative net profit margins? Things like that, because it does impact your numbers at the top of the assessment if things are negative at the beginning. Okay, yeah, she really struggled with those first um, questions around, um, it just, what are your revenue? What are your expenses? What's your gross profit margin? When it got to calculating gross profit margin and net profit margin, I thought we were gonna be there no, for the next 40 minutes, just on that <laughs> yeah, okay. question. <laughs> okay, um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna jump in here. And one thing, look, here's what you do, right? Just you see the numbers that we have on here, 50 and 20, uh, not so much there by accident. And it's just like, look, we don't know. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the average. And you could go 60, 15, 50, 20, because you're right, like the whole, the magic of the process is not this. This is just, you know what I mean? Uh, like you, you've experienced, you don't expect that to be the norm, by the way. This is kind of, I don't know that it's the anomaly, but it's the, it's the 10 to 20%, not the 80% that you're going to find that. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so just plunk in 50, 20, because the magic of the software are the 12 areas, to be clear, right? So. Yeah, um, once we got going and into the other parts of it, yeah. then things yeah, started rolling. It was great. But that yeah. initial part, boy, that was that was rough. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. but you're just learning, like high five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, you're, you're learning, right? So you just you know you got to run over the top of that, and you got to take control. So it's the example that I give is when you go to a retail store, and you know the customer is leading the staff member around the, the store. We have a problem, right? It's the staff member needs to understand your needs, and they need to be directing you. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. And my yeah, thought was maybe leave. like you were talking about uh, earlier on this call was to send out some of those questions prior to the call to just ask the really basic questions about, yep. uh, you know, that, how many clients do you have? What are you charging? Yeah, and that might not be a bad, you know, but again, if you send those questions to a startup, you know, like net, you know, net profit, gross profit, if it was that much of a dog's breakfast and you were there, you could imagine in their own time, I don't see it being any different. So I don't know that that would have solved it. Um, no, so, so I wouldn't have done, you know what I mean? I don't know that I'd be saying, Pat, your opinion of that, would you agree with me there? I agree, yep, yep, just like you said. There you go, what do you think? Is that any, you got another question or does that help? Um, I do have one other question about the, um, when I went to export the report, um, it didn't print on the cover page. No. Uh, like, okay, there, yeah. where it says profit acceleration summary. And then when you scroll down, it says who it's for and. No, exactly. Yeah, so uh, go through, I think it was here, go through the training here. And we just, um, it's right there, editing the software report. Uh, like we just said earlier in the call here today, it's, you know, with its massive problems to try and get this to look right. So you have to create a lot of it from the start. But what you want to do, like you're going to spend an hour or whatever uh, creating your perfect template of what you want that chart to look, of the whole report to look like. Save it as a template. And then every time you have a new client, if you want to generate it faster, take your template, save it as they, Save it again as the, um, let's say, the uh, profit acceleration report for client name, so you can refer to it, and then go in there and change the areas of the report you need to change. And a lot of it, like this will stay the same. Um, you're just going to sub in some of these things, sub in and out those, you know. Um, Yeah, you just go through it. You'll sub in some things like their company names and that, but you can create a template that you can go to very quickly and go, oh, I'm subbing in this on this page, this on that page. Of course, all these things uh, like XYZ daycare, you're gonna sub those out, <clears throat> um, these areas. Ideally, you're gonna have in your template, you're gonna have all 12 areas 
or on your breakthrough 40, you're gonna have all 40 areas, and then you just have to delete what you don't need and come in here and change the numbers. It, I'm sorry, it's really a pain in the butt. It's like, it's something that we would love to have um, a better report version of. It just is so much work for a developer to make it look like it does. And I mean, we could create an easier version, um, but it's not gonna have the pizzazz of this report. So um, yeah. one thing, let me just mention this as well. When you're doing an assessment for someone, um, what you don't wanna do is actually, well, this is me. Carl might have a different point of view, but this is the way I would do it. You're gonna ask the questions and you're not gonna show them reports. You're gonna ask the questions and you're gonna show them the summary screen. What I would then say is let me go away and create and write yeah. a report for you. Um, yeah. And you know, it's gonna take me a, a, a solid chunk of time. Let's meet again next week because it's gonna take me some time to build this and come up with some innovative solutions for you. <clears throat> okay, so then you're gonna meet them a week or so later and deliver the report, especially if you're doing a breakthrough 40. There's no way that you should just click a report and say, hey, let me send it to you right now. I mean, that doesn't, that shows that something was done without thinking in a sense. Yeah, So you right. build value for yourself. You say, I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this. I'm gonna create this for you. Then when you come back to them, you, you hand them this report and it's in, you know, bound it nicely. It's a nice color or whatever. And then there's a measure of reciprocity. They're like, hey, this guy's done this for me. I need to do something for them. I <laughs> might even hire him. So <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, Carl? yeah I like that. Um, yeah, and this was a friend and it was the first time. So she knew what I was doing. It was fine, but. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, if, yeah. if I could just chime in there and. Pat, totally. Um, just a little spin that I would throw in there is that we finish, um, you know, whatever you 10K meeting, 100K meeting, whatever you want to call it, right? Like the, the profit jumpstart process. Um, and now what I do is I say, well, look, exactly what Pat said. I don't show you the report. I don't even let you know that that's there, right? And then I say, look, let me go away. Actually, hang on. I'm going to press pause before I continue. Um, and this is actually, I meant to say this earlier when we were talking about um, the report. What I want you guys to do is look at your screen right now, okay? Pat, Adrian, and I, and all the collective, like, we, what, you know, if you use, you know, the coaches that have helped us develop this, which, by the way, this, these sessions have helped us do this, but we literally have hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands, I guess, of hours uh, collectively that have gone into creating this software, right? What am I saying, Matt? those hundreds of hours have allowed us to break down and go, okay, Pat, you're going to work with a business owner and you want to crush it. You want to change their existence. You're not going to do this for money. You're going to do this for impact. This is your mom. This is your sister. This is your grandmother's business. What areas do you use to impact? And he would go and, you know, we sent them off blank piece of paper. He writes down these 12. You send me away separately. I fundamentally come up with these 12. You send Adrian away on his own collectively, these 12. What I'm trying to get at, back to my example, um, the, tw you, the 12 areas, like you guys open up the software and you just go, okay, cool, these are the 12 areas. No, these are the 12 areas, like capitalized, bolded, italicized, underline it, the 12 areas. So when you say that you're gonna go away and doctor up a report, that is going to outline the most impactful areas of their business all you got to do you, you don't need to do any homework we already did the homework for you the, the good news is you've got this magical tool called profit acceleration software that just gives it to you on a you know on a you know what i mean on a silver platter so anyway so back to what i would say uh, linda so i do the, the 100k meeting i go through the profit jump start and i say look linda Here's where we're at. Um, I'm going to go away and I want to do a little bit of work on your business and I want to fundamentally understand, you know, the roadmap and the way forth for us um, to really, like, you know, we've uncovered $121,000 here today. But I got to tell you, you know, there's a lot of work to realize that and put into your bank account, but there's also a lot of money that we haven't even come up with right now. I want to go and brainstorm, maybe with my team or my whatever you're going to say there, right? My team and I. 
and I want to come back and in seven days I am going to deliver on Friday, on Thursday, next Monday, I want to come back and I want to deliver the results of that to you. And I promise you the roadmap that I'm going to put together are going to be 12 areas so impactful that I think they're going to completely change the trajectory of this business and to change, frankly, your business's life and frankly, your life, if you feel like a lot more money would do that. So here's where we're at. Um, I can either, you know, put together this report. I can do it in an automated way and I can just email it to you and wish you luck. Or what we can do is you probably need, like it appears that you need my help, a little bit of accountability, a kick in the pants, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so what I would like to do is this, let me go away and let me do, you know, a number of hours of work on your business, the opportunity, and let me really fine tune and kind of take a screwdriver to the opportunities that I really think are going to most impact you. And let me create a bit of an order as to which ones we should do, um, you know, et cetera, right? I'm freestyling this. And so um, what I'd like to do, so again, my fees, as you know, like my fees are 24 grand. I think I mentioned that earlier. Quickly, let me just show you the results that you should get. Now, Pat, I would hit um, ROI on my software and I would unfreeze my screen or I would turn my computer towards him or her. And I would say, look, as an example, if we do realize $121,000, um, that's there, the return on investment is going to be X. So again, I got $2,000 pre-populated into my software. And I go, look, these are the results that you are going to uncover. Again, do you want to trade? Like just think if I had a $10 bill and you had a five and I said, let's trade, obviously you'd want to do it as long as you knew that I was legit, right? That I could follow through. Well, look at the results of the software and look at the percentage basis that you are going to um, basically improve. So let me do this. I'm two grand a month. Um, because you're just starting, because you're new, because you're friends with my sister, because you're a chiropractor, because we're both playing on the same hockey team, because we're whatever, right? Got to be a because frame. Here's what I'm going to do for you, Linda. Let's get this thing going. But you've also cash flow is not plentiful at this stage, clearly. I'm going to give you four months to get to my fees at two grand a month. Month one is going to be 500. Month two is going to be 1,000. Month three is going to be 1,500. Then it's going to be 1,997 each month thereafter. At any stage, you want to show me the door. I'm not fulfilling. Um, you know, I'm making these grandiose promises and not following through. You show, show me the door and I'll put a month to month money, agree, money back agreement in place. Okay. But here's what I'm going to do. I want you to say, let's rock and roll because I'm really excited about working with you. All I need to do is get a credit card. I'm going to put it through for 500 bucks. Um, we are going to work together over the next 12 months to real all, realize all this stuff. And like I said, before we get together on Tuesday, I will go away and do about 10 hours of work on your business and identify the most impactful areas of your business. What do you think, Linda? Do you want to rock and roll or what? I don't know. That's that beautiful. was free. What do you think, Linda? Like, would you, did you like it? Do you think you'd yeah. sign up if I said that? Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. okay, so the only X factor, and this is, no, this is going to be on a recording so everybody can kind of play with that, but what happened there is that I said, Linda, I'm going to go away and do 10 hours of work. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with that, I, I think you should be comfortable saying 35 hours, but I got to leave that with you guys because you won't really tangibly doing the work. It's, you know, the, the computer is going to do the work for you, right? So turn on your computer at night, put it on profit acceleration software, bring up that company and pretend like it's working throughout the night while your computer just did 10 hours of work for the, the business. I don't know, whatever you got to do to feel comfortable staying in, you know, integrity when you say it. But I said, Linda, I'm going to go away and do 10 hours of work on your business. Show me a business owner on the planet after you've demonstrated your expertise, they've seen your videos, they've they're looking at your software, they've been to your website, et cetera, that doesn't want you to do 10 hours of work on your business. And I didn't throw in there, and I should have, the 497 million weighted algorithmic sequences that we're going to rip your business through, they're going to populate this roadmap, right? Like, that's the X factor. Now, I, I get your credit card number, I put it through for the 500. When I come back on Tuesday, Thursday, the following Monday, whatever, um, you know, I can I always give you back the 500 if I let you down. But believe me, when you come and present that road, in fact, not that the roadmap, but the summary. Okay, that is word for word, guys. Exactly. Could you please, Pat, bring up the summary for me, bud, and just turn to the one through, I think you know the section I mean. Um, Linda, just watch this. Um, yeah, scroll down for me, please, Pat. And then just look at this, and I'm like, Linda, like, so when I show up to the half day in the trenches, 
this is what I'm reading out about your, your business and your marketing. See this one through 16 and then the one through seven, I think below that you literally just read the one through six, read this out word for word. And they're going to be so excited. I'm, I'm basically reading through this document. When you show up with this, um, they're going to be very excited. So what I just said to be very, very just matter of fact, is I'm going to go away and do 10 hours of work and populate a roadmap that we're going to work together. Um, that's going to show you how we're going to realize this $121,000 and implementation steps and priorities. If you word that correctly, business owners just can't say no to that. It's a home freaking run. So I'd also okay. say that, uh, you can look at this position or the way you think about that 10 hours of work. You know, if you were to go away without the software and create this, how long would it take yeah. you? And I think we can all agree. Oh, God. 30. Yeah. We, in fact, you're still doing yeah. 30 hours of work. You're just doing it in 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right. So I'm going to go, go. 30 hours of work on this. I'm going to put my, my, all my sweat and tears into this. Um, and I'm going to come back in a week or in 10 days or something, and um, we'll meet again. But you've done it in 45 minutes, but it's still, if you were to do it on your own, it's 30 hours of work, easy, easy. Well, thank you guys for saving me that 30 hours of work, because yeah, <laughs> reports like that, and they're brutal. <laughs> yeah, but that's it, but you, you kind of, it's, it's, it's borderline magic, right? Literally borderline magic, so. Okay, there we go. Tell you what, guys, I got to get zipping here quick. Let's do, uh, and I apologize again. We got guys a bunch of questions. Linda, thank you so much for your question. Uh, Pat, hang on a sec, guys. Let me, and again, guys, we're doing this again uh, on Thursday. At three. Um, at three o'clock. Uh, Gary, got to keep this tight and quick, buddy, but I'm opening up. Gary, my boy from Australia. Gary Damp. You're about to be live, buddy. Can you unmute yourself, please? Okay, maybe Gary not able to unmute himself today. Um, they can also send me questions. Um, you know what? I can stay on, Carl. I can take some questions if you need to. Yeah, jet. actually, you know what? Could you do that for me, buddy? I got to. Uh, I got to zip, man. Can you handle that? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thanks so much for your questions, guys. Pat, thanks for looking after that, bud. Yep. Sure. Okay. See so you, folks. You see, um, I'm gonna go up to chat, Leonard. Let's see if I can unmute you. Chat, you are self muted. Um, let's see here. I don't know if I can get this or not. You are, yeah. Nope. All right. Well, we might be ending sooner than later if this doesn't work. I can hear me. Hey, chat. How's it going? Oh, sorry. Hey, very good. Thank you. Uh, great call. Great questions and great answers as well. I've got a couple of questions for you if, if you have time sure. for these, Pat. Yep. On Absolutely. one of the last calls. Um, and I can't remember if it was an Ask the S2Work call or a, or a Profit Acceleration call. You talked about, and you, you showed a report, and it had the uh, the current revenue was a million. I remember that. And in fact, you've got it here. With the, and then you changed the one of the parameters. It might have been market dominating position uh, by 5%, for example. And it, it you called out the expected increase in revenue, which was a little less than the 5% would have been, 5% oh, yeah. of a million, 50,000. And you said something right. like, and I, excuse me if I don't have the word, where it's exact, you said, you know, with every increase in revenue, there are costs which we build in, and therefore the actual number shown for the increase in expected uh, expected increase in revenue is less than the the five percent or the four percent or whatever it is that you and right. the, the client have agreed to. Um, is that am I getting that about right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, but w my question then is why why are you deducting that from revenue and not not adding it on to costs in some way? Um, because, yeah, right, uh, I have to think about how we went back and did that. Um, normally, you'd have it like, for example, a 50% gross profit margin, let's say on this example that we got here. And if, like here, we've got, you can see my screen there, we've got yep. a 4% increase, which was 40,000, which is exactly 4%. Um, 
-hmm. because when you're right. working with market dominating position, there wasn't really a cost to figure out what that is. Uh, with leads or with alliances and joint ventures, some of these others, there are costs involved. Um, but because we're doing everything against your gross profit margin, um, the we have a standard gross profit margin, let's say of 50%, okay? But everything you're doing with digital marketing or whatever, they come with a different variety of costs involved. And so we really can't say, hey, the gross profit margin on your alliances and joint ventures initiative is 60% and the one on your digital marketing is 55%. We can't break it down like that. No, we're not that sophisticated with the software. So we have something that is uh, close and indicative of the result of what we're looking at. And it's also, I think, conservative. So that's why we did that. OK. All right. OK. Uh, thank you. I have one other question. And it actually, sure. it was, I was reminded when you were looking at one of the reports, I think it was a Breakthrough 40 report. We had the 519,000 number was uh, on the, the, the first page of that report. Okay. I don't know if there's a way to get there. Yep. Uh, the roadmap. There one. Okay, exactly there. So it's called the 519,000 profit acceleration roadmap, but the 519,000 is the increase in revenue, not the increase in profit. So right. um, is that, uh, am, I, am I misunderstanding that or mis, uh, missing no, something? No, no, no. No, we just took the biggest number possible because it's more impressive. <laughs> All right. uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> You can call it whatever you want. Uh, you don't even have to keep the name. We've just thrown that in there because it looks better than a $220,000 roadmap report. Right. So okay. we are accelerating revenue and profits, um, but it's, right. yeah, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. Great. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're Appreciate welcome. It. Sure. Yeah. Have a good week on the, good. Um, I'm going to go to Christine Bennett Clark. Let's see, Christine, if you, there you go. Hi, Pat. How are you? It's a good day. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm, just, I'm wondering if, if you can pop over to the uh, digital accelerator. Yep. Accelerated. yep. Now I'm working with coaches and I'm just wondering, and they don't resonate with the, um, with the training that uses a lot of brick and mortar examples. Okay. So I'm wondering in here, if, if you, if there's some place that I can go to where I can create like a presentation that's based around uh, what digital marketers would be looking for in terms of, um, getting more profits like so does each one of these have a have the same kind of implementation steps that the yeah, um, go here and look um, let's say I'll go to email this is an example the first one's always the same in everything you swear review what review what review, excuse my English here excuse my French review what you're going to get second one you want to increase their understanding and we're trying to use metrics as much as possible and research in this. So we're kind of setting a stage for what's possible. Um, and here's the problem as well, Christine, what we're dealing with is the world of digital marketing changes so fast and it's yeah. so hard to keep up. And you know, we're not gonna spend our time through the year just doing the research over and over again. It's gonna be we're not gonna set and forget either, but maybe we'll revisit in six months. So if someone says, hey, these numbers are now out of date, let's go back and fix them. But uh, it just goes so quick, it's so hard to keep up. Um, define your goals. Now, these are goals that would be around, like we have email open rates, click-through rates, things like that, sharing, things like that. So those are your goals. They are digital focused, best practices, yeah, I think these are digital focused as well. Buyer personas, these are things that people are talking about. Uh, determine the content, calls to action, subject lines. I would say it's quite... Uh, okay, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure it should resonate with them. What's, what's the one with around the um, creating your 
market dominating position? This one is exactly the same as the previous one. Oh, okay, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, no, we didn't change, we didn't, oh, wait a minute, we might have made some changes. Um, we might have made a few small changes. But they would be small changes though, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very brick and mortar as well. But I think it's the concept that they need to understand and then whatever their business is, you're still going to ask, do you have down sell strategies and procedures in place? You know, these questions, you know, this one may like here pay over 90 days. I don't know. I mean, businesses are so diverse and the way that we're doing business online often replicates how we do it in the store. It's yeah. yeah. I, yeah. They, for, like, and I'm just finding with um, coaches is that they're just not, they're just not thinking of themselves as a business you know what i mean like that has sales processes and you know they they sort of know all the rhetoric about you know finding your ideal client and your avatar and stuff like that but they haven't really put it into place in terms of of what their your business model is or their practice is yeah, yeah. well you know um in business growth some people are average business pe growth people. Some people are above average, but that means there's a lot of people who are below average. Yeah. And sometimes you're just dealing with amateurs who don't think like a business. They just they're they're a mom and pop. I don't I don't denigrate mom and pops because they're often excellent. Um, they're yeah, startups yeah. with very little business building experience, and they don't. You know, they have the e-myth, Michael Gerber wrote the e-myth, where you have those processes and policies and procedures and all the things you've got to do to grow with excellence. And on the other side of that, you've got people like Seth Godin who talk about, man, if you're doing that kind of thing, uh, you, you're not going to, well, you won't grow as well because to find innovation and breakthroughs, you need to look at more like art and things like that. And, you know, and the whole concept of where are we in the middle, I'm kind of being philosophical in a bit, but if we, if we can, if I can nail my job, let's it, I'll make it personal. If I could put my job into processes and policies for Carl and Adrian, I would be out of a job because they'd find someone a lot cheaper who could do it for them. My job cannot be put into a process and policy SOP document. It's impossible because half of my job is just thinking. And right, you know, right. that happens wherever, you know, lying down at night or in the shower or going for a walk or whatever. I just think about stuff and I think, how could we do it better? And you can't put that in the SOPs. So when people like new coaches come and say, well, I'm not really thinking about that. It's like, this is your opportunity to educate and to come alongside them as the expert and hold their hand and say, look, look I've been down this road. I can help you get there. Okay, let's, let me show you how to do this. And we're going to build you a business. And then you go back to that valuation questionnaire, which is, I love uh so you say hey coach tell me are your marketing and sales processes documented so your sales are predictable they go ah not really would you like to get there um or they say no if they say no do you really want to work with that person you don't have right. to work with these people right if they say yeah it's like okay let's get it going yeah I, I think what my challenge is, and I, I probably are going to have to rethink this, is that I'm speaking to too many or most of the people I'm speaking to are coaches that are really just starting up. And all yep. they can really talk about is the content of their program or their, you know, their, they're not, it's not even their offer. It's really just the, the content of their program and how, you know, what benefit it is to people and why people have it wrong. So I think maybe I, I'm going to have to just rethink my um, my audience, my target audience. Absolutely. First yeah. of all, you want to have a target audience that has money. Yeah. And I have a very strong philanthropic missional heart. Um, and that is going to absolutely, you know, that absolutely changes how I think about things and who I want to help. But I realized a long time ago, it's a lot easier for me to help people, help the poor, if I'm not one of them. And so I first have yeah. to think, I'm going to make some money. 
Um, I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to make sure there's money going into retirement. And then I'm going to um, think, okay, now how do I help people with what I've got? But I've got to be stable first in my own business model before I go out and try and be philanthropic and help people who don't have money. And, you know, I've got, I know I have networks, like I got networks across Africa uh, in at least 29 countries. Like I've, I'm fourth generation African in many ways. I've got networks, very big networks across 29 countries of tens of millions of people. I'm not joking. And I got um, someone who says, hey, there's a pastor. He's in Malawi. He's making 20 bucks a month. What can you do to help him? It's like, well, I'm not in a position to help him right now. All right. But that's where my heart's at. So how do we help people like that on a broad scale? And, you know, I want to get there as well where I can do that. Um, and, you know, there might be coaches that come along and they're making five grand a year, 10 grand a year, 15 grand a year. That's probably not your market right now. Like go and get some success helping be yeah. business that are making at least a quarter million, get some money coming in the bank, you know, get where you need to get to as your, as your baseline of, you know, whatever it is, eight grand a month, eight, whatever, you know, hundred grand a year, whatever you want to get to. And then say, okay, now I've got some time to give away to people who are just really need some help. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And I'm aware of all. I just, I just sort of, it's just sort of really hitting home now with the amount of time that I've been spending with people that really, I mean, they don't have the the money for my program, and yet they're spending, you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on other people's programs that aren't going to help them nearly as much, but. The, um, yeah. yeah, so I think I'm just, gonna, I'm really going to have to rethink that. Yeah. Well, I'd walk and, them, get their coaches, see if you can walk them through the software and show them why they need the software to make a difference. Um, if they're, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's one thing that I can do a little bit more effectively. Is just, I really just want to show you this so that you know what I'm talking about and know what you're missing. I, yeah. I would definitely. I would definitely put that out there and just say, look, let me help you by helping you. And you take them through things like, do you have a market dominating position? I mean, just take them through three or four of those and just say, look, yeah. you know, you're starting out, you're making 10 grand a year, you're making 15 grand a year, 20 grand a year, but look what's possible. Wouldn't it be great if you had a tool like this that you could grow not only your own business, but you could grow the businesses of others that need your help and then sign them up as a yeah. licensed yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Good. You bet. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Pat. I really yeah, appreciate that. Welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, let me just scan the board here. Um, let's see here. Jeff, I'm going to go to Jeff Brandeis. Brandis. Jeff, you're live. I think that was an old question, Pat. Um, sorry. All right, no worries. I'll put you back on mute. Um, we're going to keep scrolling. Michael Kiter. Make sure I don't miss anyone, Michael. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. You got a question? Uh, more of a comment. It was uh, in regards to, I believe it was Jeff earlier about the flow. On the, uh, he had asked about the 15-minute conversation. What I do is on my virtual presentations, I use Webinar Jam, and in there I'll throw out an offer. Well, the offer is to book a time with me, and then once they book the time through the time trade, uh, they'll get an email with a link that goes to a Google form that will ask these questions and then that gives it to me on an Excel spreadsheet and it does a number of different things for me. It helps me already determine how I'm going to price them on my coaching costs because there's a difference on on what I'm going to quote on a $100,000 person versus a $5 million person. The other thing is it's going to weed out my prospects. So if I've got somebody that's a startup and they're, they're not making any money, I'm probably going to gear my conversation more towards the Elms conversation than I am uh, having them get into coaching. That is such a great idea. I'm like taking notes on the side here. Um, I really like that. That's so good. Um, so hang on. Hour 16, Mark. Yeah, thank you for that. That's excellent. I love it. One one of the things that I ask in the questions, too, is what three areas do you feel you're struggling with right now? And I list the 12 areas that we talk about so that when I get into the full consultation, I know I can go right for those three areas right off the bat. Oh, brilliant. This is why I love this call. Like, you know, 
this is just this just up levels us all the time so that's great thanks so much michael appreciate it no problem no problem beautiful um you know, i'll come back to the recording of this and i'll take some more notes on that uh tarek coming for you in case you have a question we missed tarek i think you're self-muted all right maybe i'll go to the questions pane here i'll just ask a few questions here um, okay you can't unmute all right quick question from Tarek. looks like coming through what are your guidelines on estimating the time for each of the areas of growth after going through the software oh my great question um yeah so as we look at let's say you found these different 12 areas here and i think this is what you're referring to Tarek. so uh, it's going to be different in everything i mean let me head over to the pas the jump start here I'm not sure I can give you this right away. And like cutting costs, it's gonna take a couple of weeks maybe. Um, just as a note to everyone, we're gonna be updating this. One of William's projects uh, this year is to update the whole entire um, implementation calendar. And part of that is we're gonna bring this, instead of months, we're gonna bring this into weeks. So cut cost, we'd be a couple of weeks. I would say market dominating position, a minimum one month. Because um, you look at all the implementation steps and the commitment, of, the commitment of the business owner or the person responsible that the business owners you know, putting charge to, that responsible person, if they're gonna work with you full time, if they're part time doing a lot of other things. So it could be as little as a month, it could be a couple months. You know, alliances and joint ventures, a month or two. So I think, uh, Tarek, the main thing is, yeah, who's the responsible person and how much time do they have? Um, yeah, so addition, uh, some things increase prices. You know, it depends how you go about it. So if you're going to say, yeah, we can I'll just put my prices up from 97 bucks to 99.97, and we just increase them right there. There's no thought to it. You just go and do it. So it's a week or two. But if you're in a price sensitive market, you can't do that. You have to go and do some research. And the bigger your business, the more, um, the more uh, price sensitive your, your market is, the more research you have to do. And then you have to go and test it. And then you've a bigger business, you've got different layers of bureaucracy and management that you have to get approval from, from everyone. So um, yeah, I think this area is, it's gonna depend on who's implementing how well they can implement and most business implement business owners implement poorly and then how much time you're going to devote to helping them and the size of the business is so many factors yeah so i don't think i can answer it more than that um, but hopefully that helps so um now yeah you're welcome you're welcome glad to help there uh did i see randy had a question i'll just come to you quick randy you got a question there yeah, this is uh, Randy. I'm assuming you're right. muted. Just from a scripting perspective, I thought uh, you mentioned uh, EMIF Michael Gerber, and we talked about um, earlier. You mentioned um, that you're gonna, you know, quote unquote, spend you know 10 hours on uh, putting the report together. You know, it just kind of got me thinking that um, first off, just because I'm not actually spending 10 hours doesn't mean other people haven't spent 10 hours, right? That's called leverage. <laughs> so yes. you're, you're gonna, in a way, spend 10 hours doing something. The other thing that I thought of as sort of a, um, kind of a pre-framing that question is to say how much, and we kind of know the answer based upon what Michael, uh, the Gerber e-myth book says is, you know, the question to the business owners, how much time in the last week or two or month had you spent working on your business rather than in your business. Yeah. So then, so then you get to the point where you're, you know, gonna 
put together the report and you're going to spend more time putting together their report work in other words working on their business than they just admitted to you that they've done in the last month and that's so, great so in that way you're sort of partnering you're already interjecting yourself as a partner into their business success that's great yep i like it um and, the other thing so I was just going to say too, one last bit, um, as the new guy, and I'm, I, you know, I'm, so take whatever I say as a grain of salt, but I, I in the, um, in the section on uh, the uh, profit on the software, there is the roll up section where it says, you know, here's all the people I've saved all this money. Um, okay. yeah. You know, the new section that we added as a new person who doesn't have very much stuff there results in analysis it would be awesome if we as uh as a company had <laughs> either a real-time number or just a, a made-up number to show in there that we've this is how much money we've saved because that's going to be a massive figure you know again I, I, in the comment section or the question section i put billions and billions you know as far as what mcdonald's has served right right so it has it'll carry that kind of gravity so you know if if this person and i'll carry myself in such a way when i finally get into a meeting they're not going to even question my authority because yeah. of that, hopefully but if they did I, they're going to say well how much have you done randy and it's going to be like it's going to be kind of a fall <laughs> fall flat but i can say hey but don't worry because my company as a whole we've saved you know our businesses you know, probably I'd imagine hundreds of millions of dollars, you know? So, um, yeah. So that would, that would just be a feature request. That would be awesome to throw in there. Again, it doesn't have like, to be real. doesn't even have to be extraordinarily hard from a coding perspective, just an extra line in that. So, well, I don't know about that. Um, I'll leave the coding to the coders, but yeah, uh, well, it, yeah. here's the thing is, um, the software, your software doesn't pull any information from anyone else's software. Right. Your software is not accessible to anyone else's software, including me. Oh, so really? that's okay. where client confidentiality is. It's your software. Like okay. I don't go in and roam around your software. Yeah. Um, so you need that client confidentiality. And I'm not sure we want to code it so that I'm pulling data from your software. Well, even something. if we could just put, um, a somewhat fictitious number that's con on the conservative side, given that, you know, we've had, let's say 2000 coaches through the program over the years, or maybe since the software has been introduced, I don't know what the number is, right? And yeah, you yeah. could just say on average, each of these folks are saving their businesses X number and just do the math. And I'm sure it's extraordinary, you know? Yeah, um, no, that's a, I like the idea a lot. I can take it to our, I can take it to William and see, what this will do and if that's possible at all yeah that's a good idea but let me just add a little something here about you say you're you know you're just starting out there are a lot of people who just start out and it sounds like this is a uh, and a couple things here um, you know i've been in the game a while i've been looking at this particular software for about 14 years and it morphs before my eyes every week it's, it's a mm -hmm. beautiful thing um but and it, when it comes down to knowing things about business, mm -hmm. we know that the whole area of business growth is infinite and we can only know a fraction of a fraction. And so, and we know that knowledge is doubling, it's Moore's law, right? Knowledge is doubling every nine months at the latest and probably business growth, it's probably every six months. We're moving to a place that's gonna be every six days. Right. Um, so we can only know a fraction. And it, this is a true story, I was uh, living in Japan, I was walking by this, kindergarten, I look through the gates of this kindergarten, and it's like this little three-year-old was saying to a two-year-old, I'm much more mature than you are. And I just, I just cracked up and I'm like, man, that's me in business. Yeah. It's, I know a fraction and I know a fraction maybe more than others, but I've got so long, so far to go. The combined genius that we have together as a group is remarkable. And as a group of, of business growth experts, we are far advanced. We're four-year-olds compared to the rest of two-year-olds and one-year-olds in the world. But right. we've still got a lot to learn. So I think mm -hmm. we go forward with some humility in this. Um, and we realize that growth comes through humility and asking questions and trying to figure out how to do things better, not just thinking we know how to do it all.
Right. Anyway. Well, uh, and I would I was just re-listening to uh, Russell Brunson's book Expert Secrets, and he he kind of commented to that fact in one of the earlier chapters about you don't need to be apologetic in that perhaps you don't you're not the best um, at business at this point in time, but you're probably better than the person that you could potentially be coaching. One and two, what he said was like. You know, LeBron, LeBron James has a coach. That coach yeah. is not better at basketball than LeBron James. But that coach has a different set of skills that he can coach into LeBron. And LeBron will take that and apply it, you know, to his. So you don't need to be apologetic about that's real not, good. Or, or, or feeling as if you don't have, you know, yeah, the that's quote great. unquote experience. So. Yeah. So another thing, we go back to the report and you say, hey, it took 30 hours. What I would say is it took me about 24 years and 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They go, oh, oh, I get what you're saying. OK. Right. Well, that's yeah, times. that's that's the uh, uh, it took us 30 years to become an overnight success. So exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be shutting Good. down. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Good. All right, uh, scan the board here. All right, I think that's it here. Um, listen, if you've got a question, guys, you can write me at uh, pas at noresults-nofee.com. And thanks for being on the call today and hope you uh, wish you guys all the best. And uh, yeah, thank you, Tarek, I appreciate that. And yeah, we all got stuff to do. And my afternoon is dreaming up new things for the software. So let me get at it and we'll see what we can bring you guys. Take care, guys. Everyone, see you later. Bye-bye.